Hello friends, this is Robin Norgren. I am a third grade teacher uh, in Arizona and I am about to give you a lesson on coordinating and subordinating conjunctions, which is a third grade Arizona Common Core standard. So um, we're going to go through um, a review of what coordinating compound words are, or sorry, excuse me, coordinating conjunctions are. And you can check my other videos where I go into more in-depth instruction on uh, that type of conjunction. But mostly we're going to focus here on subordinating conjunctions because that's something that's often not covered in its entirety. And so what I found is sometimes I have to spend a little more time in the classroom on this. So we're going to um, talk about what it is and then we're going to have a chance to practice. And then at the end you will be able to work uh, as a partner work or um, as an assignment that your teacher um, presents to you. Um, and then you'll be practicing uh, this um, this, pro this process with um, distinguishing, subordinating, and coordinating conjunctions. So let's get started. All right, so let's start with what are conjunctions? Conjunctions are coordinating or con con coordinating conjunctions are conjunctions that connect similar words or groups of words. Many times you'll find that they are connecting two complete sentences that could easily stand alone as separate sentences, but for ease of um, having a conversation or flow of your story, it would be beneficial for you to use one of the coordinating conjunctions to connect those two words to the two sentences together. So coordinating conjunctions, as I mentioned in the last video, many of uh, uh, many um, ways to remember like what particular words I'm talking about is by using um, the uh, word fanboy and each letter in that word represents a coordinating conjunction for and nor but or yet so. Here's some examples of coordinating conjunctions. Listen to them as I read the sentences. I like apples, but my brother prefers oranges. As you can see, you could make two separate sentences. I like apples, period. My brother prefers oranges, period. Here's another example. She is smart, so she gets good grades. You could have two separate sentences there. She is smart, she gets good grades. But again, the flow and the rhythm of a sentence and a sentence, um, especially when you're reading a story, using these beautiful little connecting or coordinating conjunctions allows for the story to move in a more um, seamless manner. Here's a last example. They can play outside or stay indoors. So with that one, it's a little bit more tricky. You would have to write, they can play outside, period. They can stay indoors, period. But again, you see where um, in order to get a little more of a flow um, to the sentence, you would remove some of the words and connect them together with that word or, which is one of the coordinating conjunctions. Now, coordinating conjunctions, again, combine sentences many times. We can combine two sentences using a coordinating conjunction. I like to read, I also like to draw. The new sentence would say, I like to read and draw. Now, let's get into subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions are conjunctions that connect a dependent clause to an independent clause. Now, if you're not familiar with those two terms, watch as we go through the examples and you'll start to notice something that will help you to explain what the difference is between the two. Here's an example of subordinating conjunctions. I will go to the park if it stops raining. Here's another. She loves ice cream because it is delicious. They will play outside while the sun is shining. Now in those sentences, 
am I using a coordinating conjunction or a subordinating conjunction? Let's explore a little more and then we'll come back to this. Subordinating conjunctions help us show cause and the effect or time or condition. So it connects ideas, but it also has some sort of movement to it. And that can sometimes be hard to recognize, but bear with me on this. For example, cause and effect. That means when one thing happens, then another thing will happen or it moves time, even within a sentence, or it tells me something happens because something else was about to happen. So again, it's something that can be explained, but also you need to experience it as you're listening to the sentence to see what is occurring within the sentence. All right, so punctuation when it comes to conjunctions, Sometimes we use a comma before a conjunction or at the end of one of the clauses when we're combining sentences, okay? Sometimes we use a comma. Let's look at some examples. We're gonna go into these sentences and I want you to look and listen to the sentence and then tell me what the subordinating conjunction is in the sentence. I also want you to pay attention as to whether or not we used a comma in order to make these sentences come together. Ready? Although it was raining, they decided to go for a walk. In that sentence, what is the conjunction? And is it a subordinating conjunction or a coordinating conjunction? Yes, the word although is a conjunction and it is a subordinating conjunction because it's connecting what we call a dependent clause with an independent clause. Let's do another one and then we'll go a little further into the explanation of what it means to be a dependent and an independent clause. After they finished their homework, they played video games. Okay, in this sentence, the word after is the conjunction. It is also called a subordinating conjunction. While he was cooking dinner, his cat was playing in the living room. What is the conjunction in that sentence? While, that is correct. Now let's remove that word while. And let's see, are these two sentences? He was cooking dinner. Could that be a sentence? Yes, it could. His cat was playing in the living room. Could that be a sentence? Yes. Now, we put this word while there. He was cooking dinner. His cat was playing in the living room. Do you notice that that word causes us to notice two things are happening at the same time. While he was cooking dinner, his cat was playing in the living room. Okay, here's another one. She aced the test because she studied hard. So again, two sentences, she aced the test, she studied hard. That word because gives us an explanation of why she aced the test. Did you notice that? All 
All right, now it's time for you to review and practice. So here on the screen, and your, um, your teacher can go ahead and leave this on the screen, are 15 common, what we call, subordinating conjunctions. Now remember, these conjunctions are used to join an independent clause, which is a complete sentence, with a dependent clause, which is a sentence fragment that cannot stand alone. Now in a lot of the sentences I showed you, they could have stood alone, um, but with a subordinating uh, conjunction specifically, you don't necessarily have to make sure both of those sentences can be by, to be by themselves. So here are some common ones. The use of the word although, or after, as, because, before, even though, if, since, though, unless, until, when, whenever, while, and whereas. Okay, so listen uh, to your instructions of what your teacher would like you to do with these words, how many you would be using, what kind of game she's going to play with you with that. It could also be a partner work. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments how you use this lesson. And as always, if you have enjoyed listening to um, these um, presentations, please make sure to like and share and subscribe. And I'll see you again next week.